Hello my fellow handymen, I'm a dwarf that you might know and welcome to the next episode of Bearded Engineer Show. In previous episode we etched some circuit boards. We have learned that this is not difficult at all and can be done simply and quickly. And now, as you might guess, we shall talk about the mask. No, not about this one. Let's talk about soldering mask. Yes, my fellow handyman, that green thing that covers factory-made PCB is what we are going to talk about. By the way, it may appear to be, for example, blue or red or even black rather than green. And no, without it our board will never look like the factory one. But mask is not only about the aesthetic. And we need it for what? Can you imagine? For soldering! Mask makes soldering process much easier and allows to automate it, especially when using SMD components. But it's very useful with deep components as well. The solder doesn't flow among the tracks and they don't tend to stick together. The key feature of the mask is heat resistance, because textilite is definitely not a heat resistant material. When using a heat gun, that's really noticeable. How many times, my fellow handyman, you've overheated the track so it fell off, but if there were a mask on the board, this wouldn't happen. I think everyone has considered putting a mask on his board at least once. However, there is an opinion that it's difficult, expensive and barely possible. But, as in case with board itself, that's much easier than it seems to be. There are three types of mask available for us. One component liquid, two component and dry film. All of them are photopolymers, so they have been fixed with ultraviolet radiation. Only the application method differ, and that's the whole point. A liquid one component mask is the most affordable, it can be ordered in China for a penny, but you know where the free cheese is. It's usually applied using PET film and glass, and it's not that easy to make a thin layer. Bigger boards make it harder. The point is that the thin layer is better, because ultraviolet rays weakly penetrate the photopolymer. But that's the problem, because pushing harder can cause a bald spot. In general, it turns out to be far from the first time experience. And if you look through the internet, you can conclude that one component mask is the source of headache. Using a two component mask is much more reliable. It's being applied using a silk screen printing method through a layer of fabric, which allows you to apply the mask evenly enough. Unfortunately, the complexity of the technology nullifies all the advantages. You need to have a specific fabric, need to dry after the application and the temperature should be strictly monitored. After the closure and developing tannin is required. The best solution is dry film mask. When using it, you get a perfect layer. But it's not that easy to get it and it appears to be more expensive compared to liquid ones. However, if you have the opportunity to get dry film mask, do not even hesitate, you won't regret it. What am I talking about? Let me show you. Actually, I'd rather recommend using only a film mask, but I understand that for many of us only liquid one is available. This is how this damn thing looks like. Before switching to dry film, I was experimenting with this mask for a long time and found, as it seems to me, the optimal way. To tell the truth, it requires a photoresist and a laminator, but believe me, the result worth it. Before you begin, you have to degrease the surface with acetone, for better adhesive. By the way, you'll need to print two templates of the mask, negative and positive one. I'll show you later what for. First of all, we apply a film photoresist. It's important to do it without bubbles. Oh, what a nice suitable piece! If you, my fellow handyman, didn't know, you can use an adhesive tape to get rid of protective film. Let's pass it through laminator. The temperature should be 110-115 degrees. Underheated will fall off during development. Overheated will flow on the surface. Oh yes, it's funny, but sometimes it's useful to check the instructions. We apply a negative template, light it up and develop.
For this type of photoresist, one person solution of soda ash is used as a developer. Already guessed, the photoresist covers places where masks should not be, and due to its thickness, or rather thinness, it will create a perfect layer. Washed, dried, and you can go with the mask. This is serious. Take care to protect yourself, the smell is disgusting. And like other photochemistry, not healthy at all. First of all, the mask should be diluted with alcohol, because it's very difficult to make a thin layer with such a viscosity. Solution should be pretty much like a syrup. Then apply a pet film. What? You don't know where to get a pet film? Here's a life hack. Go to nearest flower shop and ask for a wrapping film. Get rid of the air, smooth it and then press it hard. The photoresist on the workpiece doesn't allow glass to be completely pressed against the board and creates a thin gap where the mask spreads. Now we apply a positive template. In effect, we can avoid it, but it will be easier to remove the excess mask. The exposure. It will take long 30 or 40 minutes in order to penetrate the entire layer. But, as I mentioned before, the time will depend on many factors and I strongly recommend finding it experimentally. Remove the film carefully, the mask remains quite soft. Wash off excess with acetone or gasoline and put it again on the ultraviolet for an hour or more, the longer is better. After the final exposure, put the board into sodium hydroxide to wash out the photoresist. And take a look, the board is ready. So, we have learned how to make a mask in an accessible way. Now it is time to do it the correct way. The best solution – Dynamask 5000. A metal roll will cost you around $40. Believe me, it's worth it. Keep in mind that it must be stored strictly in upright position, otherwise it will go in stripes. Dry film mask is being applied pretty much the same way as the photoresist, but it is much more sticky and less elastic. In case of bubbles, it won't be possible to re-glue it. So what can be done? Glue small piece on the edge. Remove the laminator protection shield and feed it, so the mask could meet the board only on the rollers. Let it cool, apply the template and light it up, all as usual. Dry film mask is being developed exactly the same way as the photoresist in one person solution of soda ash. Help yourself with brush. And take a look. 
perfect. However, we are not done yet. The mask remains soft and requires tanning. So we put the board under ultraviolet and go warm up the oven. The temperature should be around 150 degrees. Roast for an hour. Just try not to get caught by your wife. And now we can compare boards covered with one component in dry film mask. Dry film mask definitely looks better. Besides, it's much more stiff and much more heat resistant. Now we can call our boards finished. Just look before and after. The mask gives us plus 1 to reliability, plus 3 to convenience and plus our 9000 to charisma. I can only repeat once again, there is no rocket science and it's available to everyone. That's all for today, my fellow handyman. I'd love to see your opinion in comments. Next time, let's talk about some retro. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you really like such content, consider to support project on Patreon. See you in the next episode!